everybody. Happy new week. I hope you're doing amazing. And today I've got someone from the other side of the world over in Arizona, USA, Sydney Francis. Hey, Sydney, it's Sunday Hello. afternoon for you. Yeah, Sunday afternoon. Yes, a beautiful hot day I here. Love it. <laughs> yes, yes. Summer over there, winter over here. Uh, but I'm so happy to have you, um, you know, launching and talking about your freshly published book, Activating Lunar Alchemy. Um, oh, let me. Uh, we don't I'm excited about too. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, going, um, we're going live. Let me put this one in the uh, waiting room. Anyway, you guys, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation as to who uh, Sydney is. But while I do that, um, I will pop her cover on the screen so you can see it a little bit closer. And if you have any questions or anything, um, you know, comments, please put them in the chat and let us know if you're watching this live or on a recording. So here's her amazing cover. So Reverend Sydney Francis is an instructor, spiritual leader and author of Activating Lunar Alchemy. Her 30 plus year study and practice of art, astrology, healing and the sacred mysteries illuminate her alchemical work with the moon cycle and personal transformative practices. Sydney has an MFA in interdisciplinary art from Goddard College a master's in theology and a master's in healing arts from the Healing Light Center Search. She is an ordained minister as well as a certified wholeness coach and emotional trauma healer. As a former university instructor, Sydney has presented many lectures and classes and facilitated groups from the southwestern US and online. Amazing, Sydney. Oh, wow. I can't <laughs> wait to... <laughs> your your kind of topic, uh, it's right down my alley because it's always so much people are always curious about all of these things. So where did this passion for this kind of work begin and what made you finally write a book about it? Okay. Um, well, I w okay, I was interested in astrology probably since a kid or, you know, I remember being a teenager and being interested. But I, I actually went to a mediumship workshop in the two like in 2000 or 1999 and i had i guess i would say i had a vision um of the way the sun and the moon work together the rhythms of the like the rhythms of the seasons and the rhythms of the moon and i went home and i drew it out and then i was trying to figure out how to um <laughs> then i started to be like okay what am i supposed to do with this you know what what is this telling me and so i started studying the moon and gardening with the moon and I created a process for, um, okay, in astrology, there's a thing called seeding the moon, which is at the new moon, when the moon is dark, you you do a ritualistic practice of writing down your wishes or what you want to come true. And um, when I started doing that, I, I tried it for a while. And then I was like, well, why, if you had a dream, like, why wouldn't you, and it was like a garden, like seeding, why wouldn't you water it and cultivate it and you know do the other steps right when you have a garden you weed the garden and you and you harvest the fruit and stuff like that so that i created this process and so i about 11 years ago i decided i wanted to write up the process in a book i even bought a publishing package from balboa press but i could not get it together to i mean i wrote I wrote versions of this book 11 years ago and then my life just went crazy. I had gotten a divorce and, and my life went crazy. <laughs> so, and then last year I met Lisa Brearley. At, well, okay. Well, ha I just want to tell you first, like last year I had like a revelation that like now is the time I'm going to write this book. And then I met Lisa Brearley and she recommended me to you. So I like, like it really got real like in <laughs> last year. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, we're sitting here where your book is now out to the world to read yeah. and um, learn about your process. So let's talk a little bit more about what's within it. Um, so let's talk about the moon's rhythm, you know, to support your, you know, writing process. I know you've got some extra tips because a lot of people who are watching this are want to be authors. And okay. there is, you know, some aspect of, um, you know, some secrets you want to share that would help alchemy <laughs> secrets for authors. <laughs> Okay. Um, so for the first part, the book is about, I would say there's two overall um, I don't know, parts of the process. 
there's a tuning to the moon cycle, which, you know, the moon, I don't know if you know, but the moon waxes, you know, it goes from the new moon to the full moon, it, you know, waxing means it gets bigger. And then it wanes from the full moon to the to the new moon, uh, meaning getting smaller. So attuning to that rhythm of the waxing and waning is part one of the process. Um, the other part of the process is making these moon wheels. So you make them, you make four in the month. You make a moon wheel at the new moon, which is the seeding of the moon. That's the mystical practice of seeding the moon. And then there's another different moon wheel you make at the first quarter, which where you take supportive actions on your seeds. This is the watering and the fertilizing part of the process. At the full moon, you stop, um, you know, the energy is really high at the full moon. You make another moon wheel, but this one is focused on recording your results, like what's happening with the energy. Let's say, for example, are you, you know, if you're writing, did you write in the last two weeks between the new moon and the full moon? Um, what's happening with the energy? Did you procrastinate, right? These are valuable insights at the full moon of like what happened with the energy of what you said you wanted to create in your life. And then at the last quarter, you do another moon wheel and that one's based on releasing whatever you observed at the full moon or in that week between the full moon and the last quarter or over the, or it could be over the whole month if you were experiencing it the whole time. You release, you do a releasing ritual to let go of the like let's say it's procrastination like you let go of the procrastination you know if you really want to accomplish a goal right you have to let go of those behaviors and and or the emotions that are or beliefs or whatever you want to call it that are contributing to that so the alchemical part of the process in my mind is transforming those the challenging the challenges that come up the whatever you want to call them, limiting beliefs, behaviors, et cetera, and turning them into the energy you need to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so then you write, you come back to the new moon and you're like, okay, I'm going to write my book. And you put your seeds out there again and you start, <laughs> right, you start the process. So um, with, with this book, I had, I, I mean, I, oh, I, so two years ago, I, for example, I I, I decided I'm going to write my book. I had attended some other people's webinars about the process and like how you'd go about doing it. <laughs> I was all excited and, um, and I was writing, I wrote a lot, like I wrote a lot for a year and then, um, something I just could not get it together like I couldn't take whatever step and I realized right before I met Lisa that I needed a mental shift from writing it I was enjoying writing like I got up every morning and I wrote and I had all these pieces and I probably had you know <laughs> you know 300 600 I don't know how many pages of writing um wow. like on I like the whole you know I could have wrote like three volumes of this and then what occurred to me right before I met you and met Lisa was that I wanted to finish and publish my book so that was a really critical mindset shift for me was like oh I don't want to just always be writing this book I want to finish and publish it and that changed it I mean I have chills telling you that because I met you with I mean I was introduced to you within a couple of days of making this revelation <laughs> and um yeah. yeah like as soon as I was like ready it like you you know I met Lisa and then I met you so um so that's one Amazing. so how you see the moon and how you think about it right because I was writing that whole time and I kept putting in my moon wheel I was writing and I was making progress but I hit a wall where I couldn't move forward <laughs> Is that what it yeah. kept like being stuck in a cycle? Yeah. I got stuck in a cycle, exactly. And then when I saw, when I, you know, what helped me move forward from that was once I shifted my, like, I'm going to finish and publish this book. I watched your, you know, when I went to your introductory webinar, I was like, oh, I'm trying to write three books here. I need to have a clear outline. And, and then again, it was easy after that, like working with you and, steward and getting that done and that so that's you know like how you see the moon is one you know part of that process um the the second part was okay after the um after i went to the uh retreat i i was working hard um i 
I decided I tried recording it and then I would when I went to editing it I just I couldn't figure out how to edit what I recorded so I I ended up turning back to write, write I ended up typing it because it sounded more like my voice when I was reading it yeah. so yeah so I recorded it all at the retreat and then went back and I was like okay I'm gonna type it <laughs> and um anyway in that process after the retreat I I had one day where I seized up in back pain. Um, and I mean, I couldn't move. I woke up one day, I couldn't move. And I was like, okay. I had been sitting at my desk and I hadn't really been balancing it with my life with exercise and taking care of my family and stuff like that. So yeah. um, with the help of Julie and Vivi, um, they were like, what do you think about enjoying the pro? Like, don't be so you know, obsessed with reaching this goal, like enjoy the writing process. So that was a mental shift for me. But also I did that last quarter work of letting go. Like I, I did go get, yeah. you know, body work and deep tissue work done, but I also worked, I needed to do the mental and emotional work to figure out yeah. why I didn't want to move forward. And so, you know, again, you know, there's more about this in the book, but I did the releasing part of like, or the transmuting, if you want that energy so that I could keep going with the process. Cause at that point I'd kind of hit a point where I, I couldn't move at all. Right? I mean, I mean, symbolically yeah, I couldn't move at all. Yeah. Literally I couldn't move. <laughs> yeah. What, what then, all of it, yeah. But yeah. One of the authors that I'm talking to um, after this, um, did a book with us like seven years ago and also at her retreat she seized up and all her body like almost got jam locked and it wasn't that she needed a massage but it needed a release like what you're talking about here I can't, yeah it's very interesting that I'm speaking to you and I'm speaking to her like a little bit later today um, oh that's about, interesting yeah, yeah. so I, you know, so I, so what kind of um uh mental and emotional blocks like you know um what what was the strategies that you used the alchemy that you used uh, you know to move forward beyond beyond these two blocks? Okay, um, I did the releasing ritual, but I also I I did probably um this isn't in the book, but you know I did some journaling, I did some inner child work, I had to really figure out why. You know, I I did some you know, kind of deep, like diving in myself, like why, you know, why, why am I feeling this way? And why have I gotten this way, uh, you know, to this point? I think for yeah. me, a lot of it was fear of putting myself out there. Um, I had multiple times throughout the writing journey, I had fears come up about like, more like public, not like writing it down, but like putting it out there, like what happens when the book is published and I'm vulnerable you know people are going to see me and so that was the kind of stuff I had to acknowledge you know figure out what it was and then be like okay I'm I'm yeah. willing to like let go of that fear or at least acknowledge that I have it and you know and how has the response been yeah. how long have you had it now in your hands for um I've had the book in my hands I guess it's been like, well, it's like four to six weeks. I don't know. I I ordered a few when they first came out and then we did the Amazon launch. So I, I got a new cover. So I, I'm just about to get my new uh, set of books. Um, So it's four to six weeks. Uh, it's been good. The reception's been more positive. It's like a lot less scary than I thought. You know, I was really yeah. af afraid of putting myself out there and people have been so positive and nice and you know other people want to write books and people have been asking me about that and it's been yeah much more positive than I I in some fear of me <laughs> telling you it's gonna be. It always is. I, I've seen this with over 900 people who've written first books and now we've got more than 1200 books that because of you guys writing second third fourth books and yeah. um yeah it's very few and far in between that may have had a negative feedback and it's usually from people who are actually envious or jealous of the progress that you generally achieve mm -hmm. we often say you never see people who are um ahead of you i guess <laughs> you know t trying to tear you down or, or all that sort of stuff so who is the yeah. ideal person who um who would want to pick up should pick up this book and have a read i think the ideal person um 
It, I mean, I do have men that do this work, but pr predominantly it's women who are attracted to this moon work. Um, it's usually someone who's gone through a major transition, like gotten a divorce or lost a job, like a major loss or life change. And they're looking yes. for um, a spiritual practice or something to help, like, get, I, mean, I don't know if get your life on track is the right word, but like, take you from not knowing and like trying to figure out the pieces, like putting your life back together and figure out like, I have a dream and I have a new sense of freedom. And now I want to put it in the direction of, of yeah. achieving, a work, you know, work that's meaningful or a dream, you know, something that's related to feeling purposeful in life. Yeah. 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 So like yeah. kind of putting a process to it. Right. Cause I've read, um, not sure what this book was called, uh, but, um, you know, females also have their cycle as well. And often looking at that part, that's one type of cycle you can also look at for productivity mm -hmm. and all that. But then this particular book also talked about the moon cycles and how in particular stages of the moon phases, like, you know, you've got your action phase and then you've got the one where you should, you should rest and recover. And as you said, reflect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, can't remember all the specifics. I read it a little while back, but um, you know, is that something that you also talk a mention in your um, you know, when you you talk about the cycles? Uh, yeah, I talk about. I mean, I would say the new moon and the full moon are are more inward or reflective. Um, I mean, the the full moon is a high energy time, but there's also like you're pausing to reflect, and then. Um, there is an active time with the first quarter and, you know, the more receptive or more rela relaxed times. Definitely. I do talk about that, like attuning your energy to getting that balance between, you know, in at least I'm sure it might be true in the Australia. I don't know. In the U S there's so much emphasis on action, like taking action all the time that they're like, maybe as a woman, it feels like as a woman, there's no time for rest or no time for my children or no time for fun. I'm always supposed to be building my business or whatever, but yeah. I would say in nature and in, in the moon cycle, right. There's an active time and a resting time. There's a quiet time and a high energy time. And I think psychologically we need that balance. Um, that's, I guess, a bias I have. And, you know, to be whole, we need a balance between, you know, active and passive or, you know, action and rest or, yeah. I agree. You know, like I say, you've got like maybe some really amazing years and then you've got some fallow years where you just take the rest and you just kind of stabilize and, you know, maintenance, maintenance mode, but more resting and stuff like that. It's yeah. everywhere, I think. Um, and it's quite unnatural. And I do know how much in the US people push, 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 push. And you guys hardly give um, not a lot of annual leave. I noticed only a couple of weeks a year to yeah. people. Australia, Australia still has an aspect of push. However, everyone takes the weekends off. They get four, four weeks of annual leave. Every it's a little bit more. I've noticed the balance between the the two kind of. Um, they do like lifestyle here a lot more. Um, yeah. And people just switch off, switch off and have that um, rest. But it's um, yeah. I, I think That's... it's something that it is unnatural, as you say. But you gotta you gotta make decisions for yourself, right? You don't have to go with what the whole cultural expectation is. Right, right. This right, exactly. Yeah, I'm glad you have that there because you're right. We only get usually, you know, people get two weeks off or less, and you know, yeah, you work these long I, days. I couldn't and, believe it. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't believe that two weeks in a whole year. I mean, we have yeah. a, a ton of public holidays here as well, so we connect a lot of long weekends and, um, you know, longer periods of every Easter or Christmas and things like that. In addition to that. There's those extra four weeks that people can take off, but um, yeah. Um, yeah. So do you do you chart the moon cycles? Like, kind of, do you have something near near you every day to kind of know where it's at, or you kind of just naturally know? Um, I I mean, I do have a couple things. I have some different moon calendars. I follow a moon calendar to, you know, more specifically watch like what sign of the zodiac it's in. But I also I mean, the skies are clear in Arizona. I can watch the moon most of the days of the year. I can see where the moon's yeah. at, um, you know, except when it's new, you don't see it for a couple of days. But um, 
So I watch it and track it in my journal. I actually, I do talk about this in the book. I draw a little circle of the moon in my journal and I draw, um, like if it's a, you know, a crescent moon, you know, I draw the little, I draw it as a little crescent. Yeah. So I do a little sketch in my, that helped me really learn about the moon. Um, when I first started, like, I don't know, it was like 20 years ago (laughs) or however many years ago, helped me to learn about how rhythmical the moon is incredibly rhythmical. Like, for example, yeah. you yeah. see it at the same, like at the first quarter, this is a good way to look at it because it's happening tomorrow, I believe. If you look up at the moon at sunset tomorrow, if you can see the sky, it'll be directly overhead and be a half, you know, be half dark and half light. And that happens every month at the first quarter, right? And if so, if you know that, like, you can really get a sense of how patterned the moon is um, mm-hmm. and where to look for it. and you know, when it's going to be where, <laughs> and, yeah. So tell me the big question. What is, what is it about the full moon, right? You know how often, like, people can say, oh, people are crazy, it's a full moon, or 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 sometimes it could, you, uh, some people can get lots of results in their businesses during a, a full moon, mm-hmm. like, and, and notice things yeah. like that. You said earlier, mentioned before there's high energy. What is, how is that related? Like, do you have some insight around that? I have some theories. I don't have, you know, they're studying it a little bit. Um, Yeah, there, okay. There is some science about, they they are starting to watch, you know, they've, science has pretty much denied that humans are influenced by the moon. But I mean, if you work at a police station or at a hospital or at a school, you know, that's not true because people do get loony at the full moon. And um, anyway, there are some good studies on like sleep and People, there was a great study, and I reference it in the book about how people get less sleep at the full moon and more sleep at the new moon. And even when they do all the things to keep the light out, it people still are attuned to the moon, even when they don't have the influence, you know, light influences or other influences. So, um, yeah. I personally believe, and this is where the energy healing part comes on. I, I think, I think, okay. If you take our human energy field, our aura, you know, that's influenced by the Earth's aura. And the Earth is influenced by the moon, the cyclical rhythm of the moon. And so, right, if you think about when the moon and the sun come together in the sky at the new moon, they're pulling you in one direction, right? That the, I don't know if you want to call it gravity or the energy is like all in one area. And on the full moon, yeah. they're yeah. opposite, right? They're on both sides of the earth. The sun's on one side, the moon's on the other side. And this has an effect on the electromagnetic field or the magnetosphere of the earth. And I do believe mm-hmm. it affects mm-hmm. us. And I I would say the way I've written about it in the book is in terms of psychology. It affects our, yeah. and the energy moves out in the subconscious and unconscious you know it comes up at the full moon um you see you see things you know if you're working on something like like you said sometimes you'll get results in the full moon or sometimes if you're working on something and you have a lot of resistance to it or unacknowledged like again writing the book you know it was probably around a full moon that my back seized up like i was working out working out working out i was putting in all this energy and action and then right like something happens but i i do think we are um i don't know if psychically i i think our energy field is connected our conscious and unconscious is connected to that rhythm that's my theory about it yeah yeah, and if people sleep less, <laughs> that's what yeah. makes them grow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm like, kind of thinking about it. And sometimes you know how you might have a little light in a room from a device or whatever. Um, yeah. Even if it's like a thing, and it seems like it seems like it's keeping you awake. I, I remember sometimes in hotel rooms, and I have this um, charger that has a blue light on it and it feels like it's like my whole room is blood blue and I need to go and cover it up so you know it doesn't bother me and maybe there is that kind of feeling as well when it is the full moon there's that extra light that that's come to, that comes through so yeah, there's yeah all sorts of theories who knows there's definitely um, an intense yeah. energy I mean like I say there it, I yeah. looked for science about it but it was hard 
it was kind of dismissed, although a lot of animals, there's a lot of science done on animals and how they're tied to the rhythm of the moon and their, and their reproductive systems are tied to the rhythm of the moon. And so there's some research in the book about that. So anyway, yeah. 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 And what about like, you know, how they say there's a strawberry moon and these, you know, like, you know, when there's a, eclipses and all that sort of stuff, is that like kind of a really special time as well? And I remember, um, I don't know, like specific moons, like people say that, oh, go out and do a particular ritual, you know, do you, do you talk about okay. those kind of different? Um, I don't, um, this book is primarily about the process of like the alchemical process about attuning to it. I, I would like to write it. I like that what you're talking about. Um, um, okay. So at least in the U S with the, um, usually it's like in different native tribes, like native American tribes, they have different moons based on, you know, whether they're harvest, you know, whether like there's like a salmon moon in some tribes, you know, which is when the salmon are running, or like you said, the strawberry moon is tied to when the strawberries are blooming. And it really has to do regionally with, you know, where you're at, like, like if, if I were going to name a moon, um, for Sedona, <laughs> like, you know, this would be like the peach harvest moon, you know, this one that's coming up in a week, um, because that's kind of what's happening, right? That's the energy that's happening here regionally. Um, so it's different depending on, you know, in the U.S., at least what tribe you're in, like what moon. And and there's like the Farmer's Almanac has different names. But um, and then eclipses oh. are, are actually... I do, I wish I talked about the eclipses in the book, although to, it was more important to get it done than to write a whole volume. I could write a whole volume on eclipses. Um, eclipses are, you know how I was saying about the new moon and the energy comes together and the full moon and then you feel this tension of the energy, right? You feel the sun and the moon are on opposite sides and like you kind of feel this stretching or pulling of that energy. Um at the eclipses, the sun and the moon are lined up in the sky in such a way that they overlap their paths. And so eclipses tend to bring out. It, OK, well, on a spiritual level, I would say eclipses bring you back to your spiritual path. Um, the moons, the moon, the eclipses happen on what's called the nodes. And yeah. in astrology, the nodes define um, your path, you know, your life's path, your spiritual path. and so often what I've seen in my own life and other people's life is, you know, if you're really focused and working on that, maybe you don't have so much chaos. You know, if you, if you know it's coming and you're also like, this is what I'm focused on, you can see that as an opportunity, right? You know, right, if you're going to expand your business or whatever, right, you can see the opportunities hidden in those eclipses. But definitely when I first started learning about eclipses, I had some really um devastating like like hard situations where my life went into like total chaos during the eclipses and then it was like an opportunity to kind of get in realignment and that's that's what eclipses tend to do is they bring up yeah. losses or challenging situations that ultimately put you back on track in your life yeah and so yeah, yeah. cool oh. Yeah. All this is really handy to know. Um, and thank you so much for sharing them with us. Let's let these guys know where they can get your book. Um, okay. So I've got a website open here and it's thecityfrancis.com. Um, so if you guys go along to uh, this website, you will be able to find um, Sydney's book here and you can buy there. It's also available in your nope. um all your good online uh, reseller stores. We can see here all the air, uh, categories. It reached number one bestseller. Um, and there's the new cover um, um, that you're having updated, I think, and you're printing some copies. Too, so. yeah. <laughs> the sticker looks like another moon, right? Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I was yeah. like, well, okay. <laughs> there's yeah. two moons on there. Well, I'm so proud of you. You know, I didn't know the full back, back story that, you know this journey for you started more than 10 years ago and um uh you had been to so many other seminars and all that and we've been blessed to work with you. you've been a really wonderful and thank you lisa lisa is listening she sent us a couple of messages here 
um, on the live and um, uh, thank you for connecting us so because we are on other sides of the world and I can't wait to meet you in real life because Sydney is also coming to our international retreat next year in Bintan so we're Yay. meeting in real life <laughs> and I wish every success in um, in the upcoming months, years you know and um, definitely uh, looking forward to the other volumes in the future that are going to come Thank out you. <laughs> There's a lot to write about, but if you're going through some transitionary uh, period in your life and you just kind of don't know a direction and you want some kind of like a tool, a modality or a strategy, you know, this could be, um, this is a very interesting pathway. And if we can get in line, I think, and um, connect with the cycles um, of the moon as well as, uh, you know, the womanly cycles as well. Sometimes it does, uh, it, we can also um, synchronize as well, I believe, um, you know, okay. in, in that other book that I was reading about. But congratulations, you know. Um, any last thoughts um, you'd like to share? Thank you. I, I'm so grateful to you, Nat. Uh, uh, I just want to thank you and your team. Like, I loved every step of the process. And, you know, I am so glad that I went with you to write this book because. I don't, you know, I definitely needed the support in the, with the retreat and the support with Stuart and the support with the publishing call. The publishing call really got me through when I was in the dark part of the process. So, yeah. uh, so thank yeah. you. For, and that's yeah. the, that's the really trick is to turn up to those weekly and to just keep uh, going, which I always encourage people. If you go to those, you'll have a smooth ride at the other end. And you did, you were a wonderful yeah. Yeah, students that followed all the steps and we can't wait to celebrate you more. So I'm guys, excited. go ahead and get this book. Uh, the link's been also posted below this video. Um, may not be wherever you're watching it, but right now while we're live, it is there. So um, that Sydney um, can get the book out to you and you can learn this in a little bit more thorough detail because you need to understand the nuances behind it. All right, guys, and get out Thank there you. and smash it out. <laughs> Bye.